Now that we have some good understanding of computation graph, we had also seen logistic regression. We are ready to use the computation graph for calculating the value of the loss function and derivative for logistic regression. So let's begin. So just a brief recap of logistic regression. Uh, we calculate a estimate of y, which is the probability of actual y being equal to 1 given some x and we want this y to be as close to y as possible and this y hat we also call a for activation and this is the sigmoid function of z so where z is uh, the weighted sum of different input features so this x is itself a vector of different features x1 x2 x3 and so on and these are corresponding weights and this is a bias term so let's uh, start with a simple example uh, where we have just two features. So we can write Z as W1X1 plus W2X2 plus B. And this is sigmoid function and sigmoid is defined as 1 over 1 plus E raised to the power minus J. And then finally we define the loss function in terms of the estimated Y and the actual Y. So let's uh, draw the computation graph for one single training example. We will not take all the M training example. Let's work with one example. So here we have just two input uh, variables, x1 and x2, and the corresponding weights and one bias. So in total, we have five inputs, x1, w1, x2, w2, and b. And these all are used to calculate z g equal to w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus b and once we have the value of z we can use it to calculate a which is sigmoid of this g and once we have this a we can use it to calculate the loss function. And this L is the same formula here. So we don't need to write it again here. Just assume that we have written the formula here. So here with this computation graph, we will be able to compute the value of loss. Now the next job is to use this computation graph to do the backward computation that is gradient of different quantities with respect to each other and ultimate goal would be to calculate the gradient of this loss function or the final variable with respect to different input variables. So first we will calculate this del L over del A, then this thing or del A over del Z and once we have this we can calculate del Z over del X1, X2, W1, W2 and B. But uh, the, uh, af after every iteration, we update W1, W2 and B uh, so that this uh, estimated, this loss function is minimal. We will not be updating X1, X2. So our goal would be to calculate the derivative of loss with respect to W1, W2 and B. So let's do the, do the back propagation part using this computation graph. So this is the same computation graph. We will start computing the derivatives. So what will be del L over del A? Let's compute it uh, and then we will update that value there. So we know that L is minus y log A minus one minus y log 1 minus a and we know that uh, if we take derivative of log x with respect to x we get 1 over x so this is the formula so using the same way if we do with respect to a we will get this will be treated as constant since it's a partial derivative so any variable other than a is constant here. So minus y divided by a and here it will be 
minus 1 minus y divided by 1 minus a and here it's uh, 1 minus a with respect to a will be minus 1. So this is the derivative of uh, this term with respect to 1 minus a and we will multiply that with so let's say this term is p so uh, del p over del a will be equal to del p over del 1 minus a and why we are taking this variable because this is a function of 1 minus a or not direct like this one this was exactly log a it's log 1 minus a and multiplied by del 1 minus a divided by or uh, del a so these two terms will get cancelled by the chain rule and if we take this term this is what we have written here this whatever is in the log comes in the denominator and what is this term this term is minus 1 so this will make it plus so this is the derivative 1 minus by y over 1 minus a and then the second term is minus y over a minus y over a so we have this value now next task is uh, del a over del z so we are going backwards so let's calculate this del a over del g so we know that a is sigmoid of z so let's expand it further it's 1 over 1 plus e raised to the power minus g so if we do this if we take this complete thing as some variable k then we do del a over del k multiplied by del k over del z again using chain rule this chain rule is very important so 1 over x is minus 1 over x square so we took derivative with respect to 1 plus e raised to the power minus z now we will multiply with or del of this with respect to z which will be 1 will get 0 and then minus e raised to the power minus z so this will be the derivative of this with respect to z so this minus minus becomes plus so we get e raised to the power minus z divided by and this is square 1 plus e raised to the power minus z square and what is this 1 over this term is a so if we take out this let's write it separately this complete term multiplied by this then this term is a square square of this so we get a square times e raised to the power minus z so once we have this or del a over del g we can calculate del l over del g which will be del l over del a multiplied by del a over del g these two will get cancelled and we will get the product of these two uh, let me write it here a square e minus z multiplied by Uh, 1 minus y 1 minus a minus y divided by a so what will be this term a square e minus z so this will become a minus a y minus y plus a y divided by a times 1 minus a and this a y a y cancels this a cancels one of these a's and we are left with this a times e minus z in the numerator it's a minus y and denominator is 1 minus a so what will be 1 minus a 1 minus 1 over minus z 
which will be I am just solving the denominator here 1 plus e minus z minus 1 so it will be e minus z divided by 1 plus e minus z so what is this term so let me write here a e minus z a minus y and this is the denominator we have simplified this so it's e minus z and what is this term 1 over 1 plus e minus z but this term is same as a so this a this a cancels this e minus z e cancels this one and we are left with a minus y so see our solution is very simplified here so it's a minus y now if we want to calculate uh, del l with respect to del w1 it will be del l with respect to del z multiplied by del g with respect to del w1 and we already know this part this is a minus y and this will be used for all the other variables w1 w2 and b so we can write it as uh, so what is this value del z over del w1 is x1 so x1 times a minus y similarly del l with respect to del w2 would be this term which will be a minus y and this term would be x2 x2 a minus y and then finally we will have del l with respect to del b these are the three things which which we will update uh, so this is a, again a minus y and this with respect to b is 1 so it will be a minus y and uh, for one step update with respect to a single training example we will do a gradient descent here and we will write w1 is equal to w1 minus alpha the learning rate and del l with respect to del w1 and we can substitute the value of this term the gradient of del l with respect to del w1 similarly we will update w2 to w2 minus alpha times del l over del w2 and finally b is updated to b minus alpha del l over del b so this is just one step of uh, gradient descent and this same thing will happen in every iteration